Hello, I'm Bill Hurl, President and CEO of Immunomic Therapeutics. I am pleased to be able to present my company to you today as we are developing a new and novel immunotherapy for glioblastoma, which we refer to as ITI-1000. We're going to have some forward-looking statements today, so we have a safe harbor statement. Immunomic Therapeutics has developed a novel nucleic acid presentation platform, which we refer to as UNITE. The UNITE platform broadly activates the immune system by direct activation of helper T cells through MHC2 presentation. The result of this work is that we have a broad and diverse pipeline of programs in oncology, infectious disease, and allergy. ITI-1000 is our lead program to treat newly diagnosed glioblastoma. As you will see, it is an active phase two clinical study, which we refer to as ATTAC-2. And we have industry-leading long-term overall survival data from phase one with a mean overall survival of over 40 months in that study. Uh, we've assembled an outstanding management team that has executed major multiple licensing deals, including the deal with Estellas Pharma in 2015, which included $315 million in upfront payments plus milestones and royalties. We have an ongoing relationship with Zenoac for animal health. And most recently, uh, we received $77 million in investment from HLB based in South Korea, which is now our key partner in developing products in biopharma. The UNITE platform, not only as we will talk about uh, in terms of glioblastoma being a significant opportunity for treating cancer patients, has da background data that goes back uh, uh, several years and includes multiple indications with multiple targets. So human telomerase combined with the UNITE technology and as a cell therapy has shown to be quite useful in treating AML, prostate cancer, and most recently lung cancer, where patients showed a clinical effect at following therapy. And then also in melanoma, uh, two different antigens were used in combination with the core UNITE technology. And again, you received improvements in overall response rates, disease control, and longevity. The way the technology works is really quite straightforward. You take a, uh, the, your nucleic acid and introduce it into the antigen presenting cell. Inside the cell, the messenger RNA is uh, used to create the target protein linked to the protein for LAMP. Uh, LAMP is a, a self protein that uniquely isolates itself in the lysosome in the same compartment where MHC2 resides. So by carrying the antigen of interest into this lysosomal compartment, when the lysosome matures and creates peptides from the antigens, these peptides are free to bind to the MHC2 binding cleft and are then presented on the outside of the cell to the helper T cells. At the same time, you're also getting a certain amount of the material that processes through the proteasome and presents through MHC1. So you get both MHC1 and MHC2 education with a big benefit that the, the uh, CD4 cells are able to enhance and expand the cytotoxic T cells. The result in the tumor is enhanced T cell presence and enhanced T cell killing by virtue of having these appropriate cells uh, localizing into the tumor environment. Uh, we've developed this technology into several key programs. Uh, as I said, ITI-1000 is our lead program in phase two for glioblastoma. We also have ITI-1001, which is a, a plasma DNA formulation that's also for newly diagnosed glioblastoma. Uh, we have additional studies for ongoing for HPV, which is preclinical, and Merkel cell car carcinoma, which is now clinic ready and heading for IND later this year. Uh, we have uh, clinical data and expanding work on Japanese red cedar. And uh, as I mentioned, we're working with our partner Zenoac on animal health activities. So on glioblastoma, the, historically, it has been a disease with a very poor prognosis. In fact, uh, less than 5% of the patients have, have survived past five years. 
There hasn't been any significant improvement in treatments in quite some time. The standard of care is, is simply surgery followed by cycles of radiation and TMZ. So after chemotherapy and radiation, there has not been any, any real significant advances in a very long time. The ITI-1000 is an autologous dendritic cell therapy. And what we do in this case is that we isolate from the patient cells, uh, from their blood, mature them, give them the vaccine, which is composed of a cytomegalovirus PP65 target, and then uh, mature those and give those back to the patient. The reason that we select CMV is that it is known to be a, uh, affiliated with tumors. So uh, early, the early work by Cobbs and, and co-workers showed that there was a very high correlation between CMV and, and uh, GBM samples, tumor samples. And then this was later confirmed by Mitchell and others uh, in 2007. And so uh, Dr. Mitchell and Dr. Sampson have pursued this and developed this, this uh, immunotherapy based around this observation. So the process is really quite simple, just very quickly. Uh, patient samples are apheresed, they're matured ex vivo, they are given then the, the uh, uh, vaccine of tumor antigens uh, to create and create mature dendritic cells, and then they are given back to the patient. The impact on this is really profound. Uh, you can see that in, these, in this first study, you had uh, a long-term progression-free survival and long-term overall survival compared to placebo, which in this case was unpulsed dendritic cells. A very uh, remarkable improvement in overall survival. A, a second arm, which used GMCSF rather than tetanus toxin as the adjuvant, you can see also had uh, an improvement in, in uh, progression-free survival and overall survival. Really remarkable results. And then when you go to look at long-term follow-up, you can see that these patients that had long-term survival uh, carried out their, their uh, uh, survival for many years and, and extended out uh, several, several years, in past 10 years in some cases. Uh, when compared with controls, this is uh, in line with what is predicted by, by the standard of care. And uh, you know, that would be again here, 50% uh, mortality would be expected at this point. And then uh, essentially 100% of patients would be by 36 months. Another way of looking at this in tabular form, uh, you can see that overall survival in the tetanus toxin was, was, was uh, quite excellent in that you had 50% uh, uh, overall survival at 36, 48, and then 33% overall survival at 60 months. Uh, very similar in GMCSF pretreated patients, you had 54% three-year survival, 36 at uh, 48 months, and 36% at 60 month. So these results uh, certainly uh, ex were quite exciting and uh, deserve to advance into the next level of uh, research, and that is to phase two. So the ATT&CK2 study, which was started in 2016, involved three cohorts, a cohort that resembled the original uh, formulation, with the exception that now the, the injection site was prepped with both GMCSF and tetanus toxin, a revised uh, vaccine formulation using a, uh, an improved design, which we believe would be more potent, and then finally a placebo comparator. So these are randomized uh, patients into these three cohorts, completely blinded, and uh, this is an ongoing study. Where we uh, sit at the moment, as I mentioned, the first patient was dosed in 2016. Uh, we hope to have interim data uh, later this year. And at the moment, we are very, we're approaching full enrollment. We have uh, over 120 patients under enrollment, and uh, those patients, so they're either under treatment or in follow-up. So we hope to have the full uh, phase two end of study report within the next uh, year and a half or two years. And we decided to add an additional arm to the renew arm to allow us to uh, treat patients who are no longer attack eligible subjects. One of the key things that uh, we've always believed in is that uh, if you can't make it, it's, you can't have a product. So we've been focused, uh, particularly for the last couple of years, on taking the, the clinical process 
and creating it commercial ready. Uh, so recently we partnered with Coimmune to um, optimize this commercial therapeutic process and uh, we are planning a, a phase 2b uh, safety study or comparability study uh, using the commercial CMC process so that we can uh, be ready to advance into phase 3 using this process as soon as possible. As far as the commercial opportunity is concerned, uh, as you might guess, uh, if you're successful with this, it's going to be a, a game changer and have substantial upside for the company. I think it's uh, reasonable to, to predict that, that uh, at least peak year sales will be a minimum of $600 million and that you could have upside potential of $1 billion or more just in the United States and in Europe. So uh, uh, we believe that based on our KOL interviews that uh, they would be very receptive to this technology and uh, if it gets to market, uh, there's no obstacles to commercialization. One of the key things that we'd like to be able to do is to move this into a, uh, a global presence. So while we're currently focused at, at Duke and the University of Florida and uh, at our own facility, we hope that uh, in the coming years, we're going to be able to expand this uh, initially by creating a brain center in Seoul, but then other centers, perhaps uh, Hong Kong and uh, Australia and South America are all possibilities. So our idea for the Seoul Brain Center, which I think is uh, what we hope is a example of what we tend to follow going forward, is that uh, we'll be able to create a replicatable brain center that will treat via cell therapy uh, early stage uh, new, newly diagnosed glioblastoma. So we uh, intend to create a bridging study to take the phase two study from the United States and create a, a bridge into the regulatory agencies in Korea so that we can uh, uh, take our manufacturing process and, and move that directly into the Seoul Brain Center. One of the things that's particularly important about our technology is that we're not limited to one style of delivery or design. It's perfectly capable of being dendritic cell, mRNA, or plasma DNA. Each of these technologies has their advantages and disadvantages. So we're hopeful that uh, as we are looking at partnering deals, we take advantage of the positive features of each of these delivery platforms and maximize the value of the Unite technology. Uh, we see many opportunities for, for therapeutic areas. Uh, we're primarily focused on viral driven cancers, but there's no reason to, that we can't go beyond that uh, into self antigens, neo antigens, and the like. Uh, certainly, we're looking at different types of biologics and, and antibodies. Uh, and in, H, in infectious disease, we think there's a, a solid opportunity there to go forward. Uh, the pipeline, as you expand into other, other uh, opportunities that are viral related at cancers, as you can see, there are many, many types of uh, cancer possibilities and, and patients available in HPV and Epstein-Barr, as well as uh, uh, hepatic carcinoma. So our upcoming milestones, the key thing for us at the moment is for ITI 1000 to get to the interim data. ITI 1001, we plan to file our IND uh, within the next few weeks and start dosing patients in the second quarter of this year. Uh, ITI 3000 is in the manufacturing phase and we expect a pre-IND meeting sometime uh, within the next couple months and actually be ready to file the IND by the end of the year. The COVID-19 is an ongoing project for comparability and proof of concept in infectious disease, and we will continue to work on that. And then we have two projects in the uh, HPV and EBV arena using self-applicating RNA. So to conclude, immunomic therapeutics has an excellent technology platform. It has a strong clinical stage pipeline and it has additional opportunities for new drugs, whether they're based on cell therapy, DNA, RNA, or antibodies. We welcome the opportunity to speak with you and discuss your plans and opportunities for collaborations with Immunomic Therapeutics and our technologies. Thank you very much.